Hello, my name is Raymond Hardy, and today I want to talk about this uh, LR, LR uh, low pass filter. And in particular, I want to uh, look at the zero input response of this filter. So, why don't we go ahead and write a KVL equation uh, to start off with? And so we have E equals the voltage across that. In inductor and that would be L di dt plus r times L or r times i excuse me so now um, I want to uh, rearrange things a little bit I want to put this e term here um, this E term, I want to put that on the far right side and also divide by L, the entire equation. I'm going to do that in one fell swoop. So let's go ahead and do that. So that gives me DI divided by DT uh, plus R divided by L I equals E divided by L. Okay, now we want to take a look at the zero input response and so what that implies is that this E divided by L term, which is called the forcing function, that implies that that will be zero. So why don't we go ahead and uh, do that. So we have DI DT plus R divided by L I equals zero. Now if our uh, if our what is if our zero if our um, forcing function this term over here if, if that is zero then that implies that we need some type of stimulus to drive the circuit. So we need some type of initial condition and uh, let me go ahead and write that we need some type of initial condition. And so the initial condition will be that the current I uh, at time zero will equal, I'll call it big I. So that's our initial condition. So to uh, go ahead and finish this uh, circuit here or this equation here we're going to go ahead and take this R divided by L times T term and we're going to move it to the far right side of this equation so why don't we go ahead and do that so we have DI DT equals minus R divided by L times I now uh, I should have mentioned earlier that this term right here, this is a uh, homogeneous uh, first order linear equation. And um, I have it in uh, standard form for a differential equation. So getting back here, now we want to go ahead and uh, do some more uh, manipulation, but let me give myself some room first. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to um, get rid of this right here. I don't think I'll need this anymore. And uh, I don't think I'll need this up here anymore. And um, let me go ahead and move this right here. I'm going to move it up. Okay. <clears throat> so now uh, we want to go ahead and uh, I want to take this I term on the far right here and I want to put it under the DI term to the left and move this DT on the left and separate it to the right side. So let's go ahead and do that. So I would have DI divided by I 
equals minus RL or R divided by L dt. So let's go ahead and integrate now. So I would integrate here and uh, integrate here. And so this di over i is the natural log term. In fact, I'm going to put it over here. So that will give me the natural log of i equals r divided by l. And this dt term would end up just being t. So I'll multiply this times t plus a constant k. Okay, so now in order to get rid of this natural log term, we need to raise uh, this entire equation to an exponential. So let's go ahead and do that. And so that would just give me i equals e to the r divided by lt plus the constant k, and I'm going to put this in parentheses. Oh, and I forgot my uh, minus sign, almost, minus sign. So now, this um, e, or this k term, uh, this whole expression could be written a little differently. Uh, and before I do that, let me give myself some more room here. So um, I won't need uh, this, I don't think. In fact, I won't need this either. And uh, I won't need this down here. And uh, let me just move this up here. OK. So now I can rewrite this. Uh, expression a little differently. So let's go ahead and do that. I can say i equals e to the minus r l t e to the k. Now this e to the k term is still a constant and so I can rename it again. I'll just call it k1. And therefore this equation would then equal i and uh, I'm going to put uh, this around t, i of t equals, in this k uh, e term, or this e to the k, I'm just going to call that um, k1. And this is e to the minus r divided by l uh, t. Okay, so uh, let me move my L. Let me just move that down a little bit. It's kind of high there. Okay. So now we need to figure out what does the K, K1 term represent. And so we have to go ahead and use our initial condition of I of 0 equals big I. So why don't we go ahead and do that? And in doing that, we have i of 0 equals um, big I, which equals k1 e to the 0, which is going to be 1. Therefore, we can say that ki is equal to big I. So in writing our final equation, we can say that um, we can say that I of T equals big I e to the r l t. And this is our 
uh, zero input response for an LR circuit. Uh, my next uh, uh, video will show for having the forcing function and um, not having an initial condition of um, I of zero equals I.